Fernie specifically, I've always been inspired by the fact that uh, she was driving to make sure that things were happening locally. So while I was thinking very broad and how do I get this across the states and different sisterhoods and chapters, seeing the work that Fernie was doing, focusing on the local community really brought me back to say, you know what, let me start here because here is what matters at this moment. So it, it's been awesome. It's definitely been a privilege to be a part of. That's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Hello and welcome to Say Hi to the Future, a podcast aimed at highlighting the human side of ingenuity. My name is Ken Tenser, CEO of Spiderworks, a leading business consultancy for mid-market organizations and entrepreneurs globally. With me today are Renee Devereaux, Director of Entrepreneurship and Changemaking at Sheridan College's EDGE. Joining Renee are Monique Pitt, founder of Gallivant, and Fernie Collier, founder of The Beaver Stand. Like this video if you enjoy our show and subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment with who we should interview next. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the show. So Renee, Monique and Fernie, welcome to say hi to the future. Hello, thank you for having us. So Renee, why don't we start with you? Tell us about the edge and, and, and how this group comes together today. Well, Monique and Fernie are past participants, alumni of our Social Impact Catalyst program at EDGE, powered by RBC Future Launch. And just to give you a little background on EDGE, EDGE is an incubator and a co-working space at Sheridan College that supports purpose-driven entrepreneurs and change makers. We're also a community of people who believe that entrepreneurship can make lasting and positive change in society. Pretty great bunch of people. Great. So when you say purposeful, tell us a little bit more about purposeful and how you sort of select uh, people to be part of the program. We like to say we support impact entrepreneurs and we use that term to describe folks who are taking a, a triple bottom line, people, planet and profit approach to developing their ventures and their ideas. So they could be nonprofits, they could be for-profits, they could be co-ops. But what unites us is this sense that we all have work to do to shape a more equitable and sustainable society. So that's what we're looking for. People who are you know, doing great work, connected to their communities, have inspiring ideas, um, and share that vision. Very cool. So Monique, when I, when I look at Gallivant, Tell me a little bit about that and, and, and the purpose behind it. Yeah, so thank you so much for having me here today. Um, as I already said, my name is Monique and I am the founder of Gallivant. So I guess first I'll start with what Gallivant even means. So to Gallivant, it means to roam about uh, with the purpose of trying to seek pleasure or entertainment. Um, being a Jamaican descent, uh, my mom would always say, you love gallivanting too much, you're always outside. And it was often framed in a way where it's just like, take it easy, calm down, stay home. Um, but I had to start gallivant in the midst of the pandemic because staying home <laughs> was just too much for me. It was too much for my mental health, it was too much for my physical health. So gallivant um, was created with uh, the purpose of creating spaces of wellness for women like myself, so like Black women and other women of color, to be able to come together and take care of themselves holistically um, in fun ways, in ways that would have that entertainment piece and that pleasurable piece. So that's why Galvan was created. That's great. So it sounds like it's physical and mental health. Oh, yes, it definitely is. One thing that was going on in the midst of the pandemic was the killing of George Floyd. And at that time, specifically, 
um, a lot of Black people's mental health were being affected by seeing the constant racial trauma that was occurring. And even more recently, there's been a lot of things that have been happening that has impacted Black people's mental health. So some of the events that we have are specifically catered to caring for the mental health piece. So we had a community care circle where Black women could come together and speak about their mental health. But then this weekend, we also have things like hikes, where as you care for your physical health, you're in turn caring for your mental health. So the purpose of it is definitely yeah, that, to care for ourselves in holistic ways. Thank you. And I mean, it's, it's, a, it's hard to find good things that come out of something like a pandemic. But when you describe that, I, I can't help but thinking that, that it's a real positive outcome of a very um, challenging period. So thank you for, for that. Um, Fernie, the beaver stand, what is, what is the beaver stand? Yeah, so thank you for asking. The Beaver Stand is a platform where we where people can find clothing and accessories that are made in Canada by local businesses. So all of our products are made in Canada with more sustainable material. And one of our tasks as founders of the Beaver Stand is really to vet all these these local businesses and ensure that they meet our environmental, um, ethical and production standards for the platform. Very cool. So how do you how do you come up with these standards? Like what what meets your standards and how do you figure that out? So yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, we're new, so it's all a work in progress. But some of the main points are really everything has to be made in Canada. They have to be made with more sustainable products. So for example, instead of having regular cotton, we'd have organic cotton. And in being made in Canada, they meet a lot of the ethical standards because of course, you know, no child labor and basic sure. working condition or above standard working conditions. So those are a lot of the check boxes that they have to meet. Very cool. So, so tell me about the edge and how that helped you in your, your journey. Yeah. So one of the questions we had was what makes your clothing brand different? And so originally we started as a clothing brand, but we really branched off to create this platform where we highlight small businesses instead of creating our own brand. And with that, we have this platform where people can find what they're looking for or find out those more sustainable products. And Edge has really helped us guide that business idea towards that direction. Very cool. So Renee, that must be uh, really nice for you to hear that your guidance really helps um, the, the, the next generation entrepreneurs get things to, to, to market. Um, I, I know that you recently wrote something for, I'm hopefully I pronounce it right, Deshpan Symposium on innovation and entrepreneurship and higher education. How do you, I've been an entrepreneur 30 out of my 35 years of working. How do you teach readiness for ambiguity and you know, complexity on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, first of all, I do want to acknowledge my colleague, Basma Sultan, who co-wrote that piece with me and um, inspires a lot of my, my thinking every day. Um, and she would have been, I think for anyone, many would have met her through Social Impact Catalyst and appreciated her great work. Our approach is that we don't necessarily have the answers. So we don't, position ourselves as experts in how to solve the complex challenges that we're facing as a society, but more as conveners and facilitators, recognizing that folks like Bernie and Monique bring a lot of wisdom to this conversation. I, would, I, I resist even this idea of how do we teach this because it's our approach is more, there's a lot of wisdom in the community and there's a lot of people who share a vision for, for the role that, that business, the role that entrepreneurship can play in shaping society. So let's bring those people together. Let's create spaces for dialogue. Let's elevate the great work that, that Monique and Fernie are doing in, in every way that we can. And so, yeah, more of a, more of a facilitation, community-based approach. And then trying to just to bring to bear the resources that Sheridan College has. And that, you know, there's an amazing community in our region of entrepreneurs and other professionals that want us, are, are entrepreneurial allies. Um, a lot of student talent and expertise at Sheridan. So we're just trying to tap all of our resources to find 
what folks need. And that's very individual based on sure. th their different ventures. So we have amazing mentors and coaches. We support people to access funding. We have cohort based learning programs. We have a co working space. You know, I'm not talking about that because it really is harnessing the community's wisdom that I'm most proud of. Oh, that's great. And, and, and absolutely the, the network that you have and, and the people that are there to support you. Where do they help you on your, your, your entrepreneurial journey? So, Monique, we started off on a little bit more of the, the, the serious side of Gallivant, and then we will stick to that. But I've got to ask you one thing. I saw it on, your, on, on Instagram. Bubble soccer. <laughs> so is, is this really fun, or is this just a, like a bit of a joke that makes you laugh when you watch people rolling around on these things? Like, what is it? Honestly, I am no soccer player. I grew up watching my brother play soccer, and I thought that after watching him for years, I would be able to perform in the way that he did, and no. And that's why we're not playing real soccer. That's why we're playing bubble soccer. A lot of the time, we are just rolling around and laughing. But Gallivant, um, although we are targeting like some deep issues, the core of it is that is joy. The core of it is us being able to be ourselves and to be in a space where we can just have fun. And as do as we're doing that, we're taking care of ourselves in so many different ways. So bubble soccer is just that, us rolling around and laughing a lot. <laughs> well, you know what? That sounds like a great remedy uh, these days. So you do, if I understand, um, you do have a background in counseling. So did that lead you to um, the whole Gallivant journey as well? Yes, 100%. I think I've been a counselor therapist for about seven or eight years. And a lot of the work that I've been doing has been talk therapy. Um, in my time in England, I was doing talk, talk therapy. My first job here at a shelter was talk therapy. Um, but I really started to recognize that for a lot of us, women talk while talk therapy is working, there's so many other spaces and places that can kind of create um, room for healing as well. Um, so when I think about myself and my own mental health challenges, for me, it was going outside. It was talking to friends. It was going to a brunch and being able to just release all the stress from the week. So for me, while I am a counselor and a therapist, I also see the beauty in community. And I also see the beauty in making sure that culturally um, activities are centered and celebrated so that people can be themselves as they heal. Very cool. Um, Fernie, you're, you're, you talked a little bit about how it got started and about sustainability. Um, I also saw that a lot of your, your suppliers have similar values or they, they, they appear to have similar values. I think one's called Happiness Inc. and another one, Sustainable Sun. So tell me how the whole community around the beaver stand comes together. Wow, I'm, I gotta say I'm very impressed. Um, the beaver stand actually started with me and my partner. So we met in Montreal and then I went to Toronto to do my master's degree. And we wanted a project to, that we both really valued. We wanted something that we could work on together while we were in separate provinces. And so with that, we created those set of values together. And I think finding the values that match other businesses is one of the, one of the ways that they fit into that list. And I think it's kind of hard to put exact rules on what makes them fit, but those values are, they're kind of untangible in a way, but really important. And so they also really value made in Canada, they value sustainability and that's what makes them fit with us. And, and one of your lines I think is that happiness is made in Canada. Is that <laughs> sort of an outtake of, of the, the genesis of this is that of, of you know the relationship that led to this business is that a fair statement or how did that come to be yeah i mean i think it fits perfectly with that image you know like everything about it this company even the name the beaver stand <laughs> is about made in canada and really for us locally made because having things that are locally produced has a huge impact on sustainability it impacts shipping and even just the local economy, it has such a big impact on that. And so, yeah, happiness is made in Canada. And I think we should celebrate being Canadian. Very cool. And, and this is for both you, Fernie and, and Monique, and it picks up on what Renee said. I mean, talk to me a little bit about community and community around the edge. I don't know if you had met 
prior to this, um, if you've met some of the other entrepreneurs, but yeah, talk, talk to me about that support system that you each need or, or, or really look for as, as up and coming or, or evolving entrepreneurs. Yeah, I can, I can speak to that. Um, for me, I've always been filled with ideas. Like my brain doesn't turn off. I'll try to go to sleep and I'll just be thinking and thinking and thinking. And I really needed to understand systems. I really needed to understand structures. And Edge definitely gave me that um, because it put me around other entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs who also had bright ideas, but also um, needed a little bit more structure. So having the opportunity to meet as frequently as we did, whether it be via Zoom or at a Justin Bieber concert, um, it really gave us the opportunity to be able to connect and share inspiration and share things that we've done in the past or hurdles that we were coming up against. Um, for any specifically, I've always been inspired by the fact that uh, she was driving to make sure that things were happening locally. So while I was thinking very broad and how do I get this across the states and different sisterhoods and chapters, seeing the work that Fernie was doing, focusing on the local community really brought me back to say, you know what, let me start here because here is what matters at this moment. So it, it's been awesome. It's definitely been a privilege to be a part of. That's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think part of being part of that community, like I came in with nothing. I don't have any business experience and having kind of people that were on the same journey with you was so helpful um, to know like you're not alone. And yeah, to meet at that Justin Bieber concert, that was great. <laughs> and to actually have a meeting in person, you know, to feel that there are actual people along with you for the ride. I think that was so helpful. Very cool. Now, Renee, when you hear these stories and you see how they're, you know, you're supporting them, you know, once the entrepreneurs like, like Monique and, and Fernie are, are sort of launched, how do you help scale or how do you keep in touch um, through the edge? We, we have cohort based programs, of course. Um, we're also in the process of sort of expanding um, a, a community membership approach that folks can can be part of to continue to engage with with what we offer. Um, so the co-working spaces that we have at Sheridan's um, Mississauga and Brampton campuses are available to our amazing alumni. And we have we have ongoing um, workshops and networking events that um, our alumni are invited to and are often open to the, the public. And we have, you know, a really amazing team that's, that I hope Monique and Bernie know are always available to them. And we also recognize that, you know, founders are super busy. So they go off and they get very busy with, you know, doing the great, the great work they're doing. So we're always kind of stalking them on social media, trying to keep track of what they're up to and helping to celebrate, you know, their wins, big and small, through the channels that we have and just generally kind of amp amplifying the work that they're doing. Very cool. No, I, I think that's great. And, and thank you for supporting entrepreneurs as they go out into the world. Because it's, it's so many times it's, okay, it's launched and, we think it's all good and we think it's all great, but that's really when the challenge starts. I mean, what do we do next? There's sort of that first period where you're completely new to the, to the market, but then it, are you getting traction? And if so, um, how do we keep it up? So that's that's amazing, Renee. Um, on that, Monique, what, what is the future of Gallivant? I mean, you, you talked a little bit about connecting in different parts of Canada, I believe in the US. So, so talk to us a little bit about the future. Right now, the future is really building the systems and the structures that are going to allow it to be as big as I want it to be. I'm trying to have different types of events. I realize that not everyone wants to play bubble soccer and not everyone wants to go on a hike. So I'm really just trying to gain the voice of those who have already come to Gallivant events and figure out what it is they want next. I hope to have a retreat by the end of the year where women of color can come together and get that real therapeutic experience in nature, uh, maybe some one-on-one -on -one counseling, but then also the fun, the walk in the wine, the juk in the jab. So 
future, I'm really hoping to have a retreat um, and, and ultimately have a, a space where women can come whenever they like to, to care for themselves. And, and what is that? I mean, what's the ultimate support? Is it, is it um, general well-being? Do you, do you see a role in, in the future of a business or in, in their professional lives as well, if you can support that? Like, what, what are the different areas that you think you can help to or want to help to support? Yeah, I, when I think about health, I think about like the different areas. So right now we're talking a lot about the emotional health and the mental health and the physical health, but um, a big part of me has been like the financial stability and health there as well. Right. So when I am hiring facilitators, I'm hiring much predominantly black women who I feel could benefit from from an, from extra income. We all could. Um, I'm hiring. I'm hiring spaces that are maybe black owned. If we're looking for sponsorships or deals, it's just all about putting money back into the pockets of those who are supporting us. So definitely support in all ways. Very cool. Thank you. Um, Fernie, what's the future of the Beaver Stand? I mean, you, you talk about sustainability, you talk about the clothing being made in Canada, but how does that come together in the actual products? How do, how do they get to market? Um, yeah, what, what do you see? How do they stay in market? What's the future there? So we hope to make buying Canadian fashionable and more affordable because right now, considering the production cost of having something made in Canada, it's a lot higher. But if we have so many people buying Canadian, it can become affordable. So we hope to make that fashionable. Um, and, you know, we want to extend, we want to have more suppliers. But on top of that, we want to, ideally, we would become, you know, the Amazon of locally made Canadian goods. Uh, so a very kind of a niche market where you can find those things you're looking for. Because a lot of the times, you know, you go to a store and it says, you know, proudly Canadian, but a lot of the products aren't even made in Canada. So we want to be transparent about where our things are coming from. And what is it about Canada that you, you think is, is going to be relevant or engaging to, well, to Canadians or, or to people in other parts of the world? So we really target selling to Canadians as well and some local um, North, um, American people. But the idea is really to have something that's local. So when you buy something from across the world, there are so many shipping costs that aren't only financial. It has huge impacts on the environment. So every time a plane crosses the ocean, even if, a, if it's a boat or whatever. And on top of that, Canadian standards of production in terms of carbon costs. So the way Canadians uh, or Canadian industries, they have these kind of check, box, check boxes that they have to check off when it comes to industry standards, but other countries may not have the same standards. So they produce less carbon when they produce products. Um, so being made in Canada is really about sustainability and having a sense of community as well. Like it's nice to put money back into the market, as Monique said, back into those Canadians that you wanna support your own kind of community. So it sounds like you'd have more um, production points so closer to your markets, like so you need to find suppliers. Is that the idea? Yeah, so we do look for local suppliers. Um, right now, all, all of our suppliers are either in, I think there may be one in BC, but the main our main supplier is in a bit mostly in Toronto and Mississauga area, the GTA, and a little bit in Quebec. And the idea there is to really have it close by. And so when we ship our products, because we're completely online, we send a donation, we make a donation to an environmental organization to offset that carbon cost of shipping. And I know that, you know, it's not equivalent, but it's a start. It's a commitment to making the world a better place, more a more green, world no I, I think that's great and never um I, I i don't know i i never say sorry for trying like as you say it's a start but i mean i think the fact that you're thinking about it and doing it is 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 awesome so yeah. um okay so monique and fernie you both have a podcast you're both part of it monique what is a future people podcast Okay, so the Future People podcast is not my own. It's just one that I was featured on. Okay. But similar to this. So I had the opportunity to talk about what Gallivant was, uh, sorry, is, and 
what the future of Gallivant could look like. I uh, also introduced myself and told them a little bit about where I'm coming from and, and how I started the organization. What's a, what's a future people or a future person? <laughs> people on the come up, people who um, have plans and have dreams and are working towards those plans and those dreams and sharing how they're gonna get there. And hopefully one day when I get to where I need to be, I can look back and be like, I was one of those future people. So um, that that's what that the whole goal of that podcast is. And it was definitely a pleasure to be on there. Yeah. That, that is awesome. And I think that anybody who listens to this one will, will say you are one of those future people. You, you and Fernie both, absolutely. So um, Fernie, is it your own um, podcast or are you co-hosting? What, what, what's it about? Yeah, so I'm actually, I'm co-hosting with my mom. Um, so she also owns a business, um, which is called okay. Frame of Mind Coaching. And she is, uh, the podcast is called the Frame of Mind Coaching Podcast. And essentially I give her case studies about something in somebody's life. And she tells us how she would deal with the situation or what advice she would give that person. And it's not directly related to the beaver stand, but it is in the category of health and mental health as well. Well, it's about happiness. Definitely. I think I think that's awesome. And I think it's amazing. I mean, as you as you say that, how you, Monique, are both you're both coming from that same place of, of helping others. And, and I think that um, discovering or building businesses around passion and around others, I think it's just an amazing place to start. And um, I wish I had known that 30 years ago. I sort of discovered that along the way. So Kudos to, to the two of you for everything you've done. Thank you. So Renee, last word here. I mean, you, you hear Monique and you hear Fernie talking about their, their successes. That must feel amazing. So you, what, what is the future uh, for the Edge at Sheridan? How do you keep turning out these incredibly inspired, passionate, or not turning out, as you said, supporting these incredibly passionate or inspired individuals? Yeah, well, I, I will say it's a joy of my work to, you know, hear folks like Fernie and Monique talk about their experience. And it's really the fuel for, for the whole EDGE team just to see, you know, this is what keeps us, this is what keep, gives us momentum. So I would say the program that Monique and Fernie were part of, the Social Impact Catalyst powered by RBC Future Launch, um, will be recruiting again this fall for a cohort that will start in January. And also in the fall, we'll be having a, in November, we'll be having a Youth Changemaker Summit um, to celebrate some of the, the great work great change making work that, that folks are doing. And I guess, you know, just an invitation to anyone whose curiosity might be piqued by, you know, what they're hearing um, to check out our website, which is edge.sheridancollege.ca. Um, and as I said, we have a community membership that we're rolling out that will give people an entry point to edge whether or not they have an idea. So trying to bring together founders and folks who are curious about these entrepreneurial approaches to, to creating change. Um, so we're just, we're looking to grow our community and we're excited to be post COVID returning to our beautiful co-working spaces, um, which are open to the public. And, and yeah, so just an, just an invitation to folks to, to check out our, our community and to, to check out the Beaver Stand and check out Gallivant. R Renee, thank you so much. Thanks, obviously, to Sheridan College and, and the Edge um, for, for being here and for bringing along Monique and Fernie. Thanks to both of you for being here today and just kudos, just so much passion, so much energy. And um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to see. It's an exciting thing to see. And, and um, the next generation of happiness and, and Canadian entrepreneurship is in great hands. So thanks for being on Say Hi to the Future today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.